yourselves back to the YouTube channel here to talk about the next episode of the Christmas Reviews Reviewers. This is day 10, even though it's not uploaded on day 11. There'll be two episodes going live today to catch up with the episodes. And today we're doing, going to be doing the Muppets Christmas Carol. My first time ever watching this. And holy hell, what a film. Just simply beautiful, magical. If you want a different version of the Muppets Christmas Carol but basically told the same but in a different way this is your film it's got Muppet magic Michael Caine at his best and it's just a brilliant blend of the Christmas Carol so your three things what I've just said blended into one to make uh, an ultimate Christmas film so subscribe like spoilers ahead let's talk about it and enjoy the video I hope you had a great Christmas so far and the Christmas video is going to be coming at <laughs> thick and fast so stick around for them on the daily. Enjoy the video. <clears throat> so the Muppets Christmas Carol, as I said. <clears throat> oh, oh my god. <clears throat> the Muppets Christmas Carol, as I said, tells a very, very same story. It's an hour and a half. Well, about an hour, 30, an hour, 40 minutes. Um, the Muppets are upset. Forefront, Michael Caine is the main human involved. He plays um, Ebenezer Scrooge, and Kermit the Frog plays the assistant to Ebenezer in the um, in the shop he works. You know, we have Gonzo and Rizzo the Rat, who are um, the narrators in a sense. They follow Ebenezer around, telling the story of um, Christmas Carol as Charles Dickens and as Rizzo the Rat. Some brilliant comedy sketches in this, like the scene where he's on top of the gate, Rizzo, and then he jumps down, and then he forgets his beans, and then climbs to the gate. Little things like that that add a bit more charm and hilariousness to this version of Christmas Carol. Michael Caine is the greatest version of Scrooge I've ever seen. You know, for me, the best version of Christmas Carol I've ever seen, the film, is the Jim Carrey animated one I reviewed this week, uh, reviewed last year. Um... He's truly marvellous in that version. Um, but in this one, because you get to see a live-action version, and I've never seen every version, I just want to throw that out there, Michael Caine is so dead and brooding in the face. But then when the emotional aspect, the, when he's crying, when he's smiling, he truly knows how to switch the button on and off in an instance. You know, seeing him as like Alfred and stuff in his later times, <clears throat> you know he's one of the greatest to do it, Caine. Kane is such a diverse and brilliant and inventive actor. <clears throat> he truly transforms everyone around you. I love his relationship with... I'm going to call them the Muppet names because I can't remember all the names. His relationship with Kermit and, you know, obviously Tiny Tim as obviously Kermit's son in this. I love their relationship. And, you know, when he's going through the ghost, it's the same emotion. But you're not flying around as much. You're sort of walking. You're seeing his ex-wife. You're seeing, and you know, you're seeing how his... Um, <clears throat> nephew and her his wife to see deceive him or how the people treat him how much of an angry person he was at the start towards homeless people how he treated the person he threw out the door there's a lot to love for the development of the christmas carol especially when it's told from the point of the muppets you see you see um miss piggy as the wife i love the bit where she's about to go head to toe with Scrooge at the door, and then he gives Kermit the raise, things like that. Uh, when he sees his gravestone, you know, you see people talking ill about him, not going to his funeral. The costumes, the setting, the way they were helped to bring, like, vegetables and fruits to life. Funny things like that. How we noticed people like the rats, and then there was, like, you know, the massive feast at the end. This film does... You know, what all of the Muppet projects do. Bring emotion, bring comedy, bring brilliance, bring Jim Henson's work to life. Obviously, I think it was, was it, is it Brian Henson? Um, his son, who has done a phenomenal job. You know, he's, done, he's, he's never going to be the same level as Jim, obviously, because Jim did Sesame Street. He created these original Muppets. But um, I think what Brian did in this film, he's brought to life probably one of the greatest iterations of the Muppets. Because, as I said, it incorporates the Muppets and Christmas Carol. You're giving people like Kermit and Miss Piggy and Fozzie the Bear and Gonzo and Rizzo the Rat 
and all those other iconic characters we've grown up loving in a magical experience. I think the story was brilliant. There was, you know, the past and the present was so well pasted and lengthy, whereas the last one of the future it didn't show much because he only wanted to touch on little bits. Would Tiny Tim live? How would Ebenezer Scrooge's future be? And it was little questions like that that instantly shut him away from the future, came back to reality, talked to the homeless person he booted away, and ultimately rectified things with his partners, with his business, had his presence out, and all the songs in this film were so magical and brilliant, well-timed, well-placed. It wasn't over the top, it wasn't cringy or unpurposefully placed. You know, I think the Muppets, when they sing, it's easier than watching maybe some musicals when they sing because there's just something brilliant about the Muppets. They've been going for a shed load of time. Um, they're some of the most iconic characters in Disney's lineup of characters. Uh, and I think having Gonzo and Rizzo the Rats comedy through the film, you know, them constantly getting knocked out the window, uh, jumping from different time periods, seeing their relationship evolve from the start to the end. Um and I just find everything they did, for him, even the set builds, the puppeteers, credit to them, you know, because I've spoken to so many puppeteers. But, you know, um, what they did for this film was brilliant. And, you know, I could go on and on and say about how brilliant it is, how excellent it is, how it's just miles better than any, uh, most of the other puppeteer stuff we see. Because the Muppets are superheroes to near enough everything. Because it's the original stuff. It's the main stuff everyone's grown up with. It's the inspiration of all of the puppeteer stuff. But yeah, a truly tremendous film, a truly tremendous Christmas film, a truly tremendous Muppets production. Um, and it's crazy that it's taken me so long to watch this. I may have watched it as a kid, but you know, it's one of those things you sort of blur out certain things. But this is not one film I'll be blurring at any time soon and will become a rich. You know, because I watched Christmas Tarot, the Jim Carrey one. I watched this. I watched Scrooge with Bill Murray, who I think is, again, it's one of the best versions of the, the story, and I'm intending to add another one at some point, maybe the first ever one. Um, I think there's one from, like, 33, 1933. I can't remember how far back the films go. But uh, if you have any Christmas Carol films you want me to review, or any of the Christmas films in general you want to see on the channel, I did 25 last year, so go check them out. I've done 11, well, this will be my 10th. There'll be 11th one out today as well. That'll be a new film I'll be checking out. So stick around for that. And of course, if you want to see anything else on the channel in general, TV shows, movies, games, discussions, videos, you let me know down below and I'll be sure to get around to them. Maybe not the back end, not this year, but if you want to see them in 2023, do let me know because I've got a lot of stuff to get through, a lot of stuff to cover, and I'll be sure to cover it as best as possible. So thanks for your support as always. Subscribe and like, and the Muppets Christmas Car will get a perfect 10 out of 10. For its brilliance, its amazingness, uh, and I I want to I want to put this out there in case you've watched maybe my Avatar video that maybe go out goes out before this or after this. Perfect ten out of ten. This is a different version of perfect ten out of ten. I call it Avatar masterpiece. There's a difference. I'm not ranking this the same as Avatar. It's a perfect ten out of ten to me because there's no issues with it. It's brilliant. It's fun. It's comical. It's heartwarming. It's enjoyable. It's brilliant. There's no issues with it. That's a perfect ten out of ten for me. You know, if I say this film great, but there's obviously going to be issues, then it'll get like 8 or a 9 out of 10. Avatar and Muppets Christmas Crowd are both given perfect 10 out of 10s, but they're both different versions of perfect 10 out of 10s. Avatar has more of a perfect, Miss Puppet, Muppet, the Muppets Christmas Crowd is more of a perfect 10 out of 10. There's a difference. So if you've watched both videos and you're questioning my ability to rate things properly, that is the variation between them two. Simply, Avatar is. They're just very different ratings, even though it's 10 out of 10. A very different 10 out of 10s. Like, if I give Grown Ups a 10 out of 10, it's not the same. It's just because that is what I think it is. You know, I can rate these films a different perspective, but if I, have a, if I have a proper discussion, people go, what are your greatest 10 films of all time? Muppets Christmas Crowd wouldn't even come in the top 25, top 30, top 100 maybe. Oh, Grown Ups wouldn't come in the top 100, but it's a 10 out of 10 because I love it. I adore it. I, I see what it is. I don't go, oh, I love this film. Because it's really not a good film, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 10. That's not how I do things. So I just wanted to say that, and I may go through, I may do a video based on my ranking uh, stuff eventually, maybe in 2023, so people get a different, better perspective of what to expect from me. And maybe we'll change the rankings in the future. But for now, it's a perfect 10 out of 10. Adore it, love it. You guys let me down below in the comments what you thought about the Muppets Christmas Carol. And it's its 30th anniversary as well. So huge, huge congrats. 30, 30 years of brilliance on the Muppets Christmas Carol. And. Maybe we'll do some more Muppet stuff in the new year. Stick around for that and goodbye.